Welcome to the Pyramid Insider. I'm Tyler Patner. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Umarex Gauntlet in 25 caliber. Let's get into it. For those of you that follow our channel, you know that we have done a 22 caliber gauntlet review in the past. Today we have the 25 cal, which has just come out. Uh, so we're going to take a pretty in-depth look at the performance on it today. Kind of do a brief glance over most of the specs of the gun and the appearance of it in terms of how it's different, how it's the same. Uh, if you want a little bit more in-depth info about the gun itself, go watch that 22 caliber review. And if you're not following the channel, definitely subscribe because you should be doing that anyway. Starting at the front of the gun, guys, we do have a fully shrouded barrel. Uh, this does keep the gun fairly quiet, although I can tell you the 25 caliber is going to be a little bit louder than that 177 and the 22, and that's because it's pushing a little bit more air, a little bit more power. And of course, underneath the shroud, you have a fully rifled barrel. Uh, now, one of the things, Umarex took the 25 in a little bit different direction, kind of listening to the market. Uh, most people complained that the 22 didn't have quite enough power for them. So Umarex powered up this 25 caliber version. They are saying 890 feet per second on the box with a 25 grain pellet uh, and also claiming about 27 shots per fill. Now, to achieve that, the regulator in this gun, and yes, of course, it is regulated, just like the 177 and the 22, has been up from 1100 PSI to 1900 PSI. So you have less air to work with here in terms of a good fill is 3000 PSI and you shoot it down to roughly 1900, uh, but definitely gonna give you more power. So we'll see exactly how much when we put this guy over the chronograph. Uh, you are running the same 13 cubic inch bottle here. Uh, so again, that's probably why the shot count isn't gonna be crazy high. Uh, again, they're saying 27. We'll see what it actually does when we put it over that crony. Coming back, you'll notice we have a quick disconnect fitting for filling, which makes things really easy. Uh, one of the things that it does come with is this little fill nipple cover. Uh, I just set it aside, not a huge deal, but you can throw it back over there and keep that dust free uh, if you so choose. And on the other side of the gun, we do have our pressure gauge. Now, it's not the most detailed pressure gauge in the world, but it'll tell you where you're at. Uh, um, so 3,000 PSI fill in this gun, that's about 200 bar, uh, and you just fill it to the three on the gauge and you're good to go. Now dropping down just below our bottle, you will find the front swivel stud. Now this actually uh, keeps the front housing here on the gun. If you ever have to take the bottle off or something like that, you will need to remove this housing, which is done by removing this swivel stud here. We detail that in the first video. Um, it's in the manual, guys, so make sure you read that as well. Uh, stock fully synthetic as you would expect. You also have a rear swivel stud here. A uh, cool thing about the gauntlet stock, in my opinion, is that you loosen this guy up and that actually allows you to adjust this thumb wheel for the elevation of the cheek piece comb here. Uh, and then you tighten it back down and it locks it in place. So really nice little feature there. So coming back to the breech, of course, it is a multi-shot gun. Uh, you have a side bolt operation. Uh, I know a lot of folks think that the gauntlet is relatively hard to cock. It's not terrible, just make sure you get your thumb on the back of that action. Use two fingers to pull that bolt back. You just get it back to there and you are good to go. You don't actually have to drop the bolt down unless you want to remove the magazine or put it back in. Uh, so you just need to pull it back to there, let it go, push forward, and you're all set. Very easy to work with. And if you do want to decock the gun, you just make sure you are off safe. You hold the bolt, you pull the trigger, you hear it release, and you're good to go. Pretty simple to do. And the magazine itself, of course, still kind of have that Marauder style magazine with the Umarex logo on the back. The 25 caliber is eight shots, so a little bit less there than the 10 that we see in 177 and 22. Uh, and up top, of course, you have an 11 millimeter dovetail for scope mounting. Today, we went ahead and mounted an Axion 4 to 16 by 44 side parallax adjusting scope. Uh, Axion is actually Umarex's optics company, I guess. Um, I'm not sure quite on the relationship there. I just know it's all in the same house. Um, that said, scope's got some pretty nice features for right around the $125 mark. Uh, so side parallax adjustment here, as you can see, pretty smooth and easy to do. You have target turrets under the caps here, uh, pretty nice as well. Again, 4 to 16. The one beef I have with the scope, just using it so far, is that it is a duplex reticle. Would have preferred a mill dot or something else with hash marks or something uh, to give me multiple holdover points. The duplex reticle doesn't do much for us air gunners. 
Dropping down, we have the same trigger that we found on the 177 and 22 caliber versions. Uh, it is adjustable, but you have to take the stock off and all that stuff to get to it. And you have in manual safety here, you flip it back and you are safe. Nothing's gonna happen there. You flip it forward and you are hot and ready to go. And that is indicated here on the left-hand side of the gun. Uh, out of the box, guys, the trigger feels a lot better than I remember our 22 version being, a lot lighter. Um, not necessarily getting a defined first and second stage, though, although you'll see that in a little bit more detail when we test the trigger. Now, before we head out to the range, I want to talk about the one significant difference that we see on the 25 caliber versus the 177 and 22, and that is this barrel band here. Now, inside of this barrel band, there's actually a little ring that connects to the shroud directly. It's not permanently affixed, so you can pop it out if you want to, but that's going to hold the shroud rigid inside of this barrel band. If you did want to go ahead and free float it, you can just pop that little ring out of there uh, and you'll have a free floated shroud inside of the barrel band but that barrel band was put in to give you some extra security in case you're walking through the woods and you accidentally bump into a tree or something like that it's not going to knock the barrel way out of alignment so a nice little upgrade there um, without further ado let's head out to the range and see how this 25 caliber gauntlet does As with most PCPs, we took the gauntlet 25 straight out to 45 yards, really no point in shooting it closer, and we had high expectations based off what we've seen out of the 22s and 177 gauntlets that we've shot here and in our previous video on the 22. Now, looking over our results today, the 25.4s, uh, both the JSB variant and the Air Arms variant did very well. Uh, tried a bunch of different pellets, both H&Ns, you know, a bunch of their pellets, as well as the JSB King Heavies and the King Heavy Mark IIs. Uh, honestly, was watching most of those pellets spiral, so this thing just likes the 25.4s. Uh, had that flyer there, I am going to call that a flyer, it was probably me, uh, but the uh, 7 out of 8 shots here with the JSBs are in a half inch group and you got this one out here opening it up to about an inch and a quarter. Uh, and then the air arms, you know, was able to keep myself together a little bit, the power of the beard came through uh, 0.48 inches, under a half inch for 8 shots at 45 yards. Absolutely fantastic out of the gauntlet in 25. So using those Air Arms field pellets, the 25.4 grains, basically the same weight as the JSB 25.4s that also shot pretty well for us. You're looking at about 22, 23 shots out of the gauntlet in the 25 caliber here. Uh, now, right at the 890 feet per second mark that they said it was going to be at, but a little bit on the low side as far as shot count. Now, uh, that's okay. I'm still getting more than two mags of pellets as far as I'm concerned. That's pretty darn good for the air supply. Uh, but overall, very good performance, a very tight extreme spread, good standard deviation, and 44 foot-pounds of smackdown. So aside from the low shot count, pretty good performance out of the gauntlet in 25. So wrapping up the 25 caliber Umarex gauntlet here today, very good accuracy performance, obviously a half inch group with the 25.4 air arms pellets and 
if you don't count the one flyer that I screwed up, pretty much the same thing out of the JSB Kings as well. Uh, very impressive accuracy out of this guy. And again, uh, all those sh uh, groups are fired from the magazine, not using the single shot tray. Although I'm glad it does come with a single shot tray. It's a nice little addition, especially for a 25 cal. Not many do. Uh, that all aside, guys, the performance here is really solid. Uh, you're getting about 22 shots, which is less than they advertise, or at least we're getting 22 shots. Uh, seem to fall off the regulator about 1,800 PSI, so pretty close. Uh, but right at 44 foot-pounds, that is some serious smackdown for a budget-minded PCP gun. And I'm really glad to see that Umarex chose to go that route with it. Like the addition of the barrel band, a little bit of added security. Uh, it's a little bit louder than we were used to, and I'm not getting some great definition out of the trigger. But again, in the price point, um, these are things that certainly aren't going to hinder you uh, in terms of performance capabilities. You know, it's still a sub three pound trigger, so that's pretty darn good in my opinion. And for a multi shot gun, you can't ask for a whole lot more here. Uh, I will say I'm not a huge fan of the Axion scope, although it performed pretty well here. It held zero and all that stuff. Uh, I would love to see a different reticle maybe in this scope. Uh, for the money, not a bad buy, but I'd probably spend a little bit more money and get a little bit better glass. That's just me. Uh, but guys, Umarex Gauntlet in 25 caliber. If you haven't had a chance to check one out yet, definitely get your hands on it. Worthwhile purchase, in my opinion. For The Insider, I'm Tyler Patner. We'll see you guys at the next one. Thanks for joining us today, as always, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.